This program is brought to you through the kind support of the friends of That's What She Said. Support BCTV by visiting bctv.org slash support. It used to be great, now it's not so great, but it's still pretty great. Reading. Eat pretzels non-stop and pot pie no top. More dessert till we drop. Works. Did they really say that? They did not say that. Yeah, they did say that. That's what she said. Hello. Hi, everyone. Are you <laughs> How are Hi. you, darlings? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jane. <laughs> I, I can't tell where we're opening up here. Uh, <laughs> Jane, you're as pretty as a picture. We're happy to see you. <laughs> I'm happy to be there. My goodness. Well, Sheila, do you take do you take the opening? Go ahead. Okay, like I'll take the up. opening. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> As you see, Jane can't be here tonight, but here, but she is here because we have her on iPad, which is awesome. What is this? FaceTime? Is that what FaceTime. we FaceTime? FaceTime. This is Yay. so cool. So we have Jane here. We have who do we have? Martha. Nicole. Sabrina. Sabrina. Sabrina joins us from Queen City Diner. Isn't that cool? Jane, where are you? Well, I'm actually on assignment here in Florida. My, my oh. goal, my mission, not like the Mormons, but s sort of. Um, I'm, I'm trying to join the Mar-a-Lago uh, retreat, yeah. resort. The resort. Um, oh. so, yeah, so far I have not been successful. They've turned me away twice. Really? But I am I'm determined to get a payment plan that they will accept. I've tried five dollars a week and that's just not happy for them. <laughs> they just won't do it. No. <laughs> so but but I'm determined to join join the club. Good. Good. They'll take you soon, I bet. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> we have all kinds of good stuff that you're missing here, Jane, and, and it makes me kind of sad that you're missing. You know, Martha always brings the best snacks and stuff. What, what do we have going on? We have peanut M and M's, my favorite. Smoked cheddar, little thingy like Slim Jims in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Slim Jim nuggets. <laughs> um, assorted cookies and. Goldfish. Goldfish. Goldfish things. Well, and these cookies are special. Oh. These are gluten free, I'm... but that's only because I can only find gluten free. Well, that's still special, and right? We're <laughs> sangria. They make gluten free goldfish? No, no, <laughs> no gluten free make, cookies. They do make gluten free goldfish. Oh. I saw some this morning. What's that? And this sangria oh. is sparkling. It is sparkling. We have some other snacks too, though. They're not yes. on the table, but Ooh, Nicole brought some fun stuff. They're in a so little. Are we ready for them now, or are they for in a little bit? Oh, for, for international little. flavor, let's do it. Let's let's check it out. Let's, okay, let's, what's what we have? So my students have been doing this cultural exchange with students in South Africa and Indonesia for the last six weeks, and we've been we're a Facebook group, and we've been sharing videos back and forth, and questions, and pictures, and all kinds of stuff. So we sent them a box of American snack foods. Could I just oh, wow. say South Africa? Did you mean South Korea? I'm sorry, did I say South yes. Africa? I meant South Korea. I apologize. Whoops. Different South. Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> South Korea and Indonesia. Um, so we sent them a box of snacks a, a week or so ago, and we sent them like Pop-Tarts and Goldfish and some of the things that we eat as snacks, and they tried them. And then they said, uh, we're sending snacks to you. So just uh, last Friday... The snacks came in, and, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, my students tried them, and we had a really good time trying the different snacks, and we have some leftovers, so I thought, why not uh, share our bounty with you ladies? What do we have? <laughs> he got that under control. <laughs> Our sangria is bubbly, <laughs> and Martha's reacting. So it's making a like, bubby. Wow. <laughs> so that's what we're laughing at. Oh, if only this would taste too good. That just happened. We're telling everybody. There's just a... Well, there's I just, am coming up. It's inevitable. It was just a low, started. guttural rumble. <laughs> it was 
like the sound a tiger makes when it's happy. So let's see, what have I got in my bag of tricks? Okay. Um, okay, so these are pretty good. Um, they're called honey tong tongs. They look like waffles. They, they kind of do. <laughs> here. Like like baby waffles. I'll show you the picture here. My honey tong tongs. My students opened them at the wrong end because they're <laughs> geniuses. <laughs> good job, guys. So they're... Um, they're nice a, <laughs> I tell them that daily. So it's apparently a touch of honey. I think... From what I gather, South Koreans really like honey, which because there were two different things they sent us with honey. There was another thing that was really good, but my kids destroyed those, so I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so they are honey tong tongs. Go ahead and give them a try. All right. They're cute. They are fun. Cute. They kind of look like those yeah, little like waffle waffle things. Waffle chips. Yeah. Can you pass one through the camera? Yours. Here you go, James. Oh. Smell o vision. They're sweet. Mm. And salty. They're sweet and salty. Oh, it's yeah. delicious. There's, just, um, there's a weird flavor that I can't figure yeah. out. They taste and like I, cheese. They taste like and I, yeah. have honey on them. They taste fishy. Yeah. Well, you know what? Fishy. We have found that most things taste, taste a little fishy. fishy. <laughs> and, and not like, you know, Old Bay seasoning, but like fish flake. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it's just there. And, I, the and I can't really figure out what's in them because all of the ingredients are right, Korean right. and I can't read that. So we're like, oh, we don't know what we're putting in our bodies, but okay. Um, yeah, okay, speaking of fishy, oh, no. they, um, they wrote to us and it says this, this thing, they wrote it in Korean like I can read that, um, <laughs> is the most typical snack in Korea. It's got a little... Uh, <laughs> shrimp on it. Oh, shrimp chips. <laughs> shrimp chips. Yeah, shrimp fries. Um, this is made of shrimp. I hope you enjoy it. Heart, heart. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another bag of these that were spicy. These are the non-spicy variety. So what would our typical snack be if we were to say this is our I typical just want to smell national it. I think the, the I'm not feeling waffle this one, one chip. is more fishy than this oh. one. This doesn't really have a... Ew! It smells like fish food! <laughs> but <That's>... thanks, like... <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've ever smelled... That involuntary, that reaction, just so you know. Which, what'd you think? Well, she no. said she wished no. she hadn't put it they, in they the were not. Yeah. They were not no, my cup of tea. just like it smells. Now, it these... <laughs> It says these um, the this blue crab snack taste is wasabi. Um, blue crab. Yeah. So I guess the I guess the seafood is big. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. The seafood is huge. Yep. Um, seafood and spice. And spice. Yeah. Um, so wasabi. the wasabi part of these is awesome, and then at the end there's a tail end of crab flavor. of crab flavor that mm. just sort of. Of a nice yes. It sort of takes all the happy yeah. feelings away. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Like goodbye, happy yeah they're wasabi. little crab shapes Hello, too. Crab. They're adorable. They are really cute. Hey. They're sweet. Hmm. I, think if, ready <laughs> I think if they took away the crab flavor and just I left the wasabi, I'd be down. They smell like cereal. Yeah, they're. they're I weird. don't want to taste it. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> I'm feeling crab right Ladies. now. Ladies. Let's, yeah, what, you want to smell it, Jane? What what kind of cereal smells like crab? It doesn't smell like crab. It smells like like sweet cereal, but it tastes like crab, evidently. The the last yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, yeah. Is it bad? It just um, it's has a flavor of that. Yeah, tells yeah. You. It's it would have been good. With it would have been yeah. Technical side, but it's yeah. Yeah, the after taste is, is nasty. Now these were not bad. These are called um, jolly pongs. <laughs> I like no, it. Like honey crisps. Jolly, like honey they, they look like um. Uh, yeah. Honey, honey smacks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're just like a puffed sweetened uh, rice, and they're they're pretty, they're pretty banging. Is there actually. any seafood in there? No, no. Okay. There is a total lack just of seafood. Just one of these. Like, well, the last uh, cereal that smells cereal. like honey Yeah, exactly. It What's, looks. Uh, in the oh, video we like made for them, I was like, I it eat these. Oh, that's what it probably like, is. It tastes mm -hmm. like that cereal, yeah. yeah Those are pretty decent, cereal. right? Yeah. Oh, um, good. Yeah. I won't make you try these, but these are baked whale snacks. And they taste shrimpy too. Stop, whale. Um, Try the fish. Nicole. <laughs> yeah. And then the very Nicole. last thing is Nicole. What? Jane has a question. Uh, I'm sorry. Have Have you contacted your uh, your your South Korean students to uh, tune in to stream us for tonight's show? I oh. I let them know that we do this. I don't know if they're able to stream in. <laughs> 
Hopefully all right. they can, but um, right now it's 9 a.m. where they are, so they're all in classes. Oh. So they'll have to catch the rerun. Well, wouldn't that be a wonderful uh, uh, class assignment to watch us do our right. and eat their treats? We're knocking to watch us. Yeah, yeah, watch yeah. Us. yeah. How, how gross their snacks are. The, the very last thing, and I didn't bring regular ones to taste oh, test, oh, but they said that um, they get Hershey's chocolate, they get Oreos, Oreos, but they said they taste different. Yeah. Than the ones that we have, they said there's that whale oh, in it. There's whale. In it. <laughs> they said that it our um, they said that our Oreos are sweeter. Oh, they say Oreo. Yeah, they still Actually, say they, Oreo. Oh, still Oreos, okay. What well, we we tasted tested this morning in class, and we thought that yeah, ours were a little bit sweeter it. and had oh, more okay. vanilla in it. I'm afraid. When you taste them side by side. Mm -mm. No, <laughs> ours is just a little bit sweeter. The cookie is, yeah. I like these better. But I like mm -hmm. these, yeah. The cookies are lighter. These well, these were good. Mm -hmm. They are good. Is this the last one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Mm -hmm. This was really good. This was fun. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. So, thank you, South Korean friends. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Not everything was gross. Some of it was really good. <laughs> well, we... Uh, well, some of us, not all of us. I didn't get to go, but um, Nicole and Martha and Jane, I believe. No, I didn't get oh, to go. Oh, you didn't go to either? No, no. Okay, yes. so David Nicole. was there. David and, <laughs> and Nicole and Jane went to B&H Organics. So we have some video clips of that um, trip. So can we show that tape? Well, we're here at, uh, what is this called? This is uh, B&H Organic Farm. And who are we meeting? We are me meeting Erica Lavdusky. Wonderful, and she's going to take us all around this wonderful organic farm and show us organic things. Yeah. Ah. Hey everyone, we're here with Erica, and she is the owner of B&H Organics. And so we're gonna talk to her a little bit about um, how she came by this farm. So Erica, what got you started in the organic farm business? I was always interested in eating healthy and uh, organic yeah. foods myself. And then I started working on a farm in Harrisburg uh, for a summer. And then I went up to New Hampshire and a couple other farms to see how I would like that. If I would like to grow my own food or just even see how it's grown and decided that the life for me. That's the life for you. <laughs> so, oh, go ahead. How long have you been doing this? A year. Uh, this is our 10th year. Oh yeah, and then, um, but probably about 15, 10 to 15 years before that is how long I've been doing it. So, so I know that you lease acreage off of yes. the Hearts Farm. Yes. How much is there and how much do you lease? Uh, the whole farm is 150 acres. I lease 12 acres and we grow on about four to five acres and the idea is that we have more land than we're growing on so that we can rotate crops, do cover cropping. Like this field here is mostly grasses because it's out of production this year to, um, to rebuild the soil. Right. So I think the big question is what makes a farm organic as opposed to conventional farming? Right. So we actually are certified by the USDA. Um, so we have all the paperwork, we go through all the inspections. Um, we do not use any synthetic uh, chemicals, fertilizers, herbicides, or anything like that. They, they will seal the show. <laughs> yes. Speaking of sealing the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greg. <laughs> Do they all have names? That was that was David, <laughs> who was He's out hungry. of frame, but we could hear him along oh, with the cow. There's a baby one peeking up. Yeah, yeah, look how cute they are. I love baby boos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's, she's hiding. It. Kitty, Kitty ran away. Kitty oh, ran away. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about we go take a tour of the farm? Does that sound good? <laughs> How about we go tour the farm? Anyway. <laughs> David is so cute. <laughs> that was awesome. He was adorable. <laughs> he is adorable. It's one of the few moments he was well behaved at that point in the day. <laughs> <laughs> we want to just remind you that you can call us live. We do have a phone number at 610-378-0426. You can also tweet us at she tweets to me on Twitter. Um, we also have Facebook, 
let's see, what is it? Facebook.com at She Posts to Me on Facebook. And then our website, TWSS.TV. Okay. So um, we were just discussing while we were playing that video, this new mini series that's kind of taking things by storm. Everybody's been talking about it. So um, it's called The Handmaid's Tale. Um, we were just discussing that. You know a little bit more about it. I know that it's based on a book, but... Yeah, I've been watching it. Um, I've been watching it from the beginning. I was looking forward to it. It's based on a book by Margaret oh Atwood um, about a dystopian future where the, this religious group, um, like fundamentalist Christians, have overthrown the government and have enacted religious policy into their government. And... Um, and that's how they run things. And um, and it has good return, like they cut their emissions, and so they're being like more environmentally sustainable. But there's these men who rule named commanders, and then they have their wives. And if their wives are barren, they bring in a handmaid who dresses in red as denoting her fertility and her ability to bear a child for the wife who is unable to do so herself and so it's it's very it's very topical <laughs> yeah it's it's topical, very topical yeah. there was something that happened in the news right before I watched an episode and I was like well that's a mirror and it, it was a little frightening to see sort of what could be it, it wasn't that fantastical at all um, and in this last episode they sort of they 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 do like present day and then they do flashbacks so they're kind of showing you how it all came to be in, in segments. And now they're starting to show you sort of like the time right before they overthrew the government and took over. And it was like it, it was very frightening to think how how real it, is, how how real real it could be. I think be. a lot of those dystopian novels that when they first came out were <clears throat> science fiction. I mean, almost that kind of thing that we read again, like 1984 when I was in high school. 1984 was the book that you hid under your mattress so that you could read it when <laughs> you were downstairs. Right. And, and you read it now, and it's like, wow, that's not too what far from scandal? some of the things we're going through. It would be interesting to do a comparative literature course, I think, mm -hmm. on dystopian novels that people have been shocked by and that now is sort of not so really shocking, but that more norm. scary. People raise yeah, the bar. Yeah, yeah, now. yeah. Like, well, it's, it's like that, um, it's like the story of the frog in the water. If right. you put the frog in the water and slowly turn the heat up, it'll allow itself to be boiled. So what changes do we allow and allow to normalize because they happen so slowly? And we just right. accept oh, them and normalize them. So that's yes. scary. Yeah, it is scary. Yeah. And that's, is. that's a lot of what The Handmaid's Tale is, is what do we allow to be normalized in our culture? And that's culture. a difficult question, I think, especially today, because there are so many things that that are happening that we don't want this to be the norm but how far do you go to keep it from being the norm mm -hmm. um you know how far do we how far do we protest i you know the whole thing that's going on in college campuses not letting speakers speak because they are very conservative but you go to college to open your mind there are ways to protest and still know what's going on i think yeah. this idea of protesting so that the speaker can't speak is kind of shutting your ears to not allowing yourself to see the other side of the picture you can't really make a judgment until you know the whole thing mm -hmm. um but but the dystopian novels you're right it's how far do we go to before we say this isn't normal and it has to stop and you know what can i do and what can you do with me to help it stop it's kind of a scary thing right now i think you know it's world. If I may ju jump in here. Do, the, Jane, because I'm dying here. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the protests against the conservative speakers are understandable, but it, it is wrong-headed as far as free speech goes. We can allow them to speak, and certainly we can voice our opinions you can protest. against or right. for that speech. But to ban them is against everything we stand for. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I agree. I do agree. There, and there are ways that you can yeah. protest and let them know with signs or 
thickening or whatever, but they get to speak yes. because that's for Indeed. Well, what about we, the we can't, at Notre we Dame can't, just walked out? Oops, sorry. sorry. It's a peaceful protest. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you started talking about that, that's what jumped to mind when um, Vice and, President Pence was the keynote right. speaker. Oh, a lot of students. A did. lot of students and their parents, Notre Dame stood and up and their walked parents. out. I'm not sure what school that was, was but I didn't watch that video. They just walked out. And I, <clears throat> I, um, that's fine. I was okay with that. Yeah, you know, I have that, no that was their that. choice. They were respectful. Absolutely. They didn't make a rough. No, they, they, they didn't make a big quiet. noise. Chose she not was, to hear him. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's I, the I biggest key is making sure that they're not disrespectful or erupt or right. exactly. giving, exactly. like letting people as well. I mean, you're there protesting and showing your voice and your opinion and allowing somebody else to do the same. I think that's the mutual respect. That's why we live here. We have the freedom exactly. to be able to do so. And exactly. I think that so much has become so normal or we may think it's normal and we're blinded by maybe what is going on and everybody's trying to maybe overcome certain things but looking at each other in not necessarily the negative way and I think being able to show respect for one another regardless of your views or your opinions or anything is one of the most highly prestigious thing somebody can hold to themselves is giving somebody that space that they can be themselves in and I, I feel like we should be able to get that get to that place in life but where we're going it doesn't seem to be happening and it's it's this, you know, this show is like one step I forward it is back. exactly and I think it's a lot of it is fear right exactly now. yeah the fear of the unknown people are really afraid and so if I let you in to my head I may really I don't want to let you into my head because I'm so afraid of, of what might happen. And yeah. I think you're absolutely right, Sabrina. We have to open ourselves up to, to hearing everything. Yeah. As long as we decide we may never agree, we I may know. never agree. As long as we don't. Have to remain as long as respectful. But as long as you, what you're saying doesn't hurt other people. The end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well I it's a hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, and fear is a definitely divisive thing um, and, and if we approach things with respect we can get much further along indeed I agree indeed indeed well I know that we have some other videos here from okay. our visit Yay, to B&H organics, organics. so we're gonna go ahead and show <laughs> another video can we roll that tape Great. Now I've heard, I see you have chickens here yeah. in, a, in a little container, and I've heard about moving chickens around the field to, to help fertilize. Does that, yeah. do you do that? Yeah, this is what we call a chicken tractor. Ah. And so actually it has wheels on the back, and then we lift up the front. There's a string here we attach to the tractor, and we lift up the front and we can move this along the field so they can till up the soil and then their manure that they leave is fertilizer for the next season. And do they walk along as you're towing it? Uh, usually, or they run underneath and run away. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they, they don't really do anything you tell them to do. <laughs> but, they, but they're beautiful. What, what kind of chickens are these? The black and white ones, they're called barred rocks. Oh. And the uh, red one is a Rhode Island red. There's a white one that's very skittish. Yep. Yeah. It's back there. I'm not sure what variety that is. Someone okay. gave her to me. And do they, and do they, all have, do they have different colored eggs? No. Yeah. No, they're all brown eggs. Oh, well, that's a different color. I'm well, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen Martha, uh, I've watched Martha Stewart's show. Yeah. And she has these green eggs. Oh, yeah, and the Oricanas. I've always wanted to see one of those. Yeah. And have green ham with it, and life would be, <laughs> life would be susical. Uh, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, what is that? Look, she's <laughs> oh. Look, David, she got a chicken out. My goodness. <laughs> Can you, can you be? Can you oh yeah, they don't peck or anything. So when you hold them, you just have to hold the wings, then they feel safe and they can't fly ah. away. My goodness, look at your big back feet. So that rips this up this. 
yeah. mess up the soil. And yeah, they're scratchers. They like to dig for food. So they don't really forage or eat grass like you would think. They really like to dig everything up. I call this one small comb because her little comb is much smaller. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really all have names. Oh, this beautiful beach. Oh, aren't they really soft? Oh, indeed. I didn't expect it to be They're that. They're very soft, it's, yeah. It's, Can I have You want to yes. pet it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's okay, they don't peck. Look, they won't peck you. Oh, or she won't. How soft. So they're all girls. They all have lay eggs. Yeah. Do you like to eat eggs? No. <laughs> you do. You love eggs. Yeah, I don't. I expected it to be a rough texture, and it's yeah, just they're really like soft. yeah, it's amazing. And these are you can see they're very well cared for chickens too. Yeah, they're small. They've got good body size. Their feathers are very, very, very healthy. What a good chicken. Oh, it's okay. All right. <laughs> Yes, we were in an okay. organic farm. So while we were watching the video, and actually we found this out shortly before we went on the air, there was a shooting in Manchester, England at an Ariana Grande concert. They have confirmed about 20 people dead. Is that correct? And I know that, Jane, you just mentioned that you had an update on that. Is that right? It is. Uh, I, it is correct. Um, uh, the Manchester police are saying it was, they are thinking it was a suicide bomber. Oh, gosh. Um, there is a uh, website to go to, or actually on Facebook, at Slade, A-T-S-L-A-D-E. Uh, what? On, oh, sorry, it's on Twitter. At Slade, A-T-S-L-A-D-E. Okay. Um, to, find out, uh, to, to find out if any loved ones are uh, involved uh, and to find updates on that. So... Um, we wish everyone very well there. Um, this is another horrible example of hatred in the world. This is scary. Um, that, really scary. At an Ariana Grande concert. 20 to 30 people, 20 to 30,000 people the stadium holds. And the stadium is like Madison Square Garden. It's built on top of um, a railroad station. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and Manchester, I think, is the second biggest city in, in England. Um, Pretty so I'm scary. sure there was a lot pretty of people scary. at that yeah. concert. That's yeah, so it was scary. Just These are terrifying times. Yeah, they're, they're they're terrifying. Terrifying. You know, some really scary stuff going on. So we're definitely thinking about everybody in Manchester and hoping for the best for everybody. I, I would have to add, if I may, that yes, these are scary times and yes, these are scary deeds. But the thing we mustn't do is to give in to that terror. You're right. We must, mm -hmm. we must allow our love and our light to overcome what is going on. Because if we feed into that, it is only fomenting that sort of mentality. Right. So That's exactly what they want to do, is to terrorize Exactly. <clears throat> so. Yeah, that, it, it's a shame. I mean, you know, some people just don't know how to express themselves, and this is... Cowardice. The crazy mentality right. that they have to, to try and express themselves, and it's you know and it, you know innocent people go to a concert, and this is you know who who would have thought whoever thinks that yeah. terrifying, you know and and speaking of terrifying, I mean there there's a, a news that uh, uh, an article that I recently read and it's been all over the news lately about the um, fraternity death at Penn State. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, sure everybody right. here has, has read or heard about you know that what? in some um, aspect. You have two Penn Staters sitting here. Right. And, and it, you know, it, it affects us. What I have to say, very honestly, is this is just horrendous. The, the sense of entitlement those members seem to have, um, whatever creates that society of just going on and, and we'll just pretend that he, there's nothing wrong here. Well, but I have to say also, the, the, the fraternity scene at Penn State is no different than fraternity scenes at most other schools. Oh, yeah. It's just a bigger school, and I guess they have something like 52. Almost every major fraternity is represented on campus. Um, but it, but our little colleges school, around here, right, ex right. but what happens in some of our smaller schools are just microcosms of the Penn State scene. 
that was just the epitome of awfulness as far as a complete lack of caring for human life. It was, I think really it was the fear of getting in trouble trumped Trying to save this the kid. The fact that they needed to save this kid's life. Right. Like, oh, right. if, if they he didn't report goes, it because they were, we're going to get in trouble it. and we could, you know, that shouldn't be more important than the fact that this kid's seriously hurt and could die. He needs to go to the hospital. Right. Didn't he fall? He fell down the stairs. Fell twice. Yeah, just... I read the, um, yeah, the, the I don't video know what it's record. It's I read the video record, record right. and 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 how they captioned it of you know this happened and this happened and then it added in like what was said and stuff like that like apparently a one kid at one point a kid said they should call a hospital and he was pushed up against a wall and said you won't say anything right so there's that um, intimidation there that, there's you know, that the intimidation. one person that thought about doing the right thing but I still don't let him off the hook no because exactly. you you He's still do now. the right thing. And you know what? Every kid there now has to live with the fact that they are complicit in this child's death. You bet. Right. And, and I don't condone his actions either at all. But, I mean, I get no. the fear. I get it. I mean, peer pressure at that age, you don't always make the best decisions, you know. You learn but alcohol, decision making but, skills and, in college. And this is not the first time that kids passed out in no. that fraternity house with alcohol. That yeah. drinking until Indeed. you're absolutely out of it is just not it's just what happens in many places mm -hmm. and it's wrong and it's the culture and because there's so little priorities. supervision but um, it is not the culture of all and i want to put that no, out there most, and, and i expressed all. this at our meeting too i right. was part of a fraternity at penn state and i told the story of when i was a freshman they invited me out to a party i had a little more than i should have and at that point one of the other ladies that was there she switched me to water. She sat with me, didn't let me out of her sight. And not only did I have a ride back to campus, but I was walked to my dorm, to my door, and they called me the next day to make sure I was okay. And that's, I'm sure that's, that's the culture that should be there. That's the culture that should, but that's that a minority everywhere. culture. Yeah, but, but right. And it goes to the larger picture, if I may, that we in the United States treat alcohol as, as such a scary thing, I mean, we it, it becomes this thing on a pedestal. Alcohol can be a scary be. thing. I mean, we we go to college and suddenly we're twenty one and or under, and we can suddenly drink. And because we've been repressed from that, now many of us have drunk before we get to that age, but becomes this whole big explosion of ability. There's and a lot of freedom in college, and that's where things get out of hand. And it's and it's Indeed. not that they have too much freedom. New freedom. Once. It's that they weren't taught how to exactly. how to manage their freedom. It's and new how to, freedom. Yeah, they don't yeah. know what to do with it. They're it, on rain. But it's the same thing how we treat alcohol as we treat sex in this country. You know, it's that big scary no no until all of a sudden, okay, now you now nobody's you do watching. It. Yeah, and and we have no ability for moderation or mediation. Mm -hmm. We just. Go, buck Go wild. hog wild, yeah. Yep. It's just insane. I think, I think the other thing, though, is that as you read other articles about what's happening in a lot of colleges with great inflation and now, I just read that one law school says that maybe they shouldn't give law students anything. There shouldn't be C's or lower allowed in law school. So we'll what? give everybody. And so the idea that some school decided that they may not give grades at all, um, I think... Perhaps our college Why cultures ought to get a little tougher. Maybe For we sure. should expect a little more of our students instead of goes bringing the therapy grades, dogs in during ages. finals and the, you know, all the things that we're doing to, um, you know, colleges after the election. Um, some of our local colleges as well as other colleges had places where kids could go to lick their wounds because Hillary had lost, and they had actual therapists come in. To what? help students deal with this election, this is what happens in a democracy. Oh, this whole trigger you know, warning thing is... has me just in a state. Oh, the trigger thing. Oh, it right. triggers me. I, it, <laughs> we just stop being coddled. This mm -hmm. is real exactly. life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You don't always yeah, win. Exactly. Yeah, you don't always win. You don't. Always you don't always get your way, and you don't always ace the test. Sometimes there's more learning and failure. Mm -hmm. And but I have to say that there, there was an attitude that I picked up when I was working here in a local college of students whose feeling of entitlement, if I get to class and I do the assignments 
and turn them in on time, <laughs> what else should I have to do for night? It didn't really matter if, the way, if they were well done or if they contributed to class, but I met the requirements and that's an A. You, know, you met the basic requirement of being in class that you were paying 40000 a year to do. That's um, the mentality. Yeah. Yeah. These are the things that are becoming that's normal. Scene. Yeah. 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 Exactly. About it. And it's, we allow it. And it's exactly. the accolade of mediocrity. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, we got to wrap that up. Okay. <laughs> All right, because I'm the problems of the world. All right, let's see. Well, allow me to be a little bit entitled here because I have the surprise topic. <laughs> Yay! Let's pull it up right now. Roll that tape. Roll that tape. <laughs> Surprise yes, topic lady. Time. All right. We're ready. Right. Let's get on us, sister. I want to know, what is everybody's worst habit? I will confess oh. mine right off the bat. I have a lot of bad habits. Goodness. I bounce my knees. I'm a nail biter. I grind my teeth. So what, 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 is, what is everybody's worst habit? Snacking. Snacking? Hey, I do that too. Gosh, I'm a... Pile of mess. Yeah. Hot really mess express, baby. Because I have really yeah. bad habits. I don't know what I'm willing to do. I just like to do a laundry list of mine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and belching. I belch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Martha belches. I am it's super the gassy. <laughs> Same. Sometimes I blame it on David. Right. Like, it'll David. Or the dog. <laughs> I always got to blame it on the dog. I was oh, like, shit. that was not David. <laughs> <laughs> so even when it is David that passes gas, he's like, Nicole. Nicole. I'm like, it wasn't me. Was <laughs> this time it really was David. This time it was David. <laughs> this time it was. I am, I am the girl who cried for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. I want to uh, how about you, uh, It really is. Probably. So what is your worst habit? My worst habit is probably controlling my facial expressions and biting my tongue. I would Ooh, probably guilty. say that is, uh, that my facial expressions my are like <laughs> up here where I think I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yes. I just don't get this. So uh, I'm going to say that's probably my worst Controlling habit. Controlling your face yeah. and your tongue. Yeah. Yeah. At yeah. this point in the school year, I have lost that smoke screen. <laughs> I can't right. see everything in real time. Like, you're dumb. Stop that. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. I overheard the kids the one day going, is it just me or is she like meaner than usual? And I was like, <laughs> I heard point, that yeah, call yeah, it's your no. fault. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I am. Like, okay, okay, yes, Nicole. I am. It's That's your right. jokes. There That's are right. no nerves left to no. step on, right? I don't even have my last one. Jane, Jane what about left? you? Do you have any bad habits? Uh, well, I know you're well, a lady, have, but. <laughs> uh, well, I am a lady, but I do have a very bad habit. Uh-oh. Oh. She's puffing. Oh. I admit that it's... It's... <laughs> Jane likes to vape. I'm sorry. I have my personal assistant over here making very lewd, lewd gestures. And I, and I while, while I'm on here, I do have to thank uh, uh, my dear friend, Chris Violet, for uh, updating me on uh, world topics while we do this. But yes, vaping is my... <laughs> And keeping my glass full, which, which is, I'm not drinking the same thing as you. I'm drinking, what am I drinking? Absolute lime and Bundaberg um, ginger beer. Ooh, it's that sounds delicious. amazing. Oh, Ooh. it's We'll have to try that tasty. here sometime when you come back. <laughs> yes, indeed. But yes, vaping is my, uh, my, my, my bad habit. Um, I have found that through many years that nicotine works best in my system and this seems to be the best uh delivery system for me wow do you ever think you'll quit not today no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what if you enjoy honestly, it so be it everybody has honestly, that I, I, I quit that nicotine for seven years and over those seven years i missed it every day and i felt horrible and I, I admire anyone who just goes completely off it because, well, uh, one, one should probably be not nicotined. But uh, <laughs> at, at this point in my life, no, and, um, I, oh. I think it's better than, than actual s smoking of cigarettes. I think it gives me less chemicals in my system. 
I think, that's, yeah, that's I think it's true. a little bit healthier. That, that's true. Yeah. Well, good. I'm so. glad. I'm glad you just have that one bad habit. Everybody's well, allowed that one. Oh, I just made a bad habit. habit. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Roll the outro. Okay, we're gonna watch one more video. I think we have um, we have a couple more videos, but we're gonna watch another video from our trip to B and H Organics. Roll that tape. Well, now we were very lucky to get you because it's very early in the season, and once a couple weeks hit, you're going to be flat out through the end of the season, aren't you? Uh, starting Monday, oh. which is in two days. Oh yes. my goodness yes. gracious. Everything gets <laughs> bananas from now <laughs> until Christmas. Oh yes. my goodness. And this, is, this is all the, the stuff that's about to go in, huh? Yeah, hopefully if we uh, this week. So all our staff comes back. They, we are seasonal, so they get laid off for the winter. And they all come back starting in the beginning of April. And hopefully we get everything planted. How many people does it take to run this off? I have three full-time employees and a lot of part-time employees because we have a lot of people who work in exchange for vegetables oh, that's and uh, yeah so and we have a lot of students kind of just for a little bit like a uh, high school one of my students. students yes right oh, excellent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what's yeah. over in this wheelbarrow well that's actually I was cleaning out the greenhouse this morning so uh, we did microgreens this year and those are all finished so then that'll go to the Oh, well, it's today. still very pretty. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's the, pretty garbage. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go in the greenhouse. Let's go. David. All right, so I was lucky enough, back in March, my school gave um, all the faculty the day to go find um, a business or an industry or something to go spend the day and learn more about um, the businesses in Berks County so that we could, you know, think about that when we're teaching our classes to make it applicable for students. So one of my students works for Erica, and she kept telling me, she was like, you need to meet Erica, she's fantastic. So I called Erica up. And my coworker and I spent the day here and learned all about what they do at B&H Organics. And um, we actually were put to work and had to plant some kale. And this is what we planted. It grew. And it was only three weeks ago, <laughs> it was, right? Yeah, it was only three weeks yeah. ago. So it's awesome to come back and see um, that what we did worked. <laughs> yeah. And that you did a really good job. There's only one plant per whole. That was, was me. Very impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited to come back and see the fruits of our labor. Yeah, you know, come full circle. It does. It yeah. does. So, so at uh, B and H Organic Ooh. Produce this winter, we transformed our greenhouse into a microgreens operation. So microgreens are baby greens, uh, usually lettuces, sometimes other things that uh, you harvest when they're only two to three weeks old. So all the nutrition and the energy in the plant is really alive and uh, very potent so and very flavorful. That was a new project that we did this year. So we have some examples of some microgreens here. So you can just eat this like this. Now, this one might be a little... Mm. Can you try that? delicious. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Tastes like beet. Tastes, Tastes like, beet. like beet. Now this is red cabbage, so yeah, feel free to get in there. Does that grow up into be the big head? It could, yeah, but we'll harvest it. So look, this one I picked yesterday. So like, you just cut it all before it gets big. It's amazing to see what things look like before they're what mm. you're used to seeing is, them. Is this bean? Peas, peas. Okay. Mm, I love and pea look, green. So if you try this one, this will be nice and spicy. If you try one of these, let me try that part. And my hands are clean, believe it or not. Uh, I believe it. <laughs> A little dirt never hurt anybody. Yeah, yeah. So they say, don't panic. It's organic, right? Mmm. <laughs> so good. We are back, ladies. We're back. Hey, we're back. <laughs> that was fun video. Um, uh. So, so um, you know. <laughs> you want to start that again? <laughs> no, I'm laughing because Jane was. Jane went. 
<laughs> Jane made me laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, what do we think about like um, the the baby giraffe, April? That the, adorable. <laughs> the giraffe, oh. adorable. That, that was, was a big phenomenon. Like everybody, yeah. was, everybody watching. was watching that. I I didn't watch much of it because. I have time. It was long. The it video was, was like long. three hours. Well, it was it was like a month that this live camera was set up and people were like, I don't think she's really pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> There's no baby. And then once the baby was finally born, they were like, oh, okay. There's there really baby. was one. But yeah. I, mean, I watched just cute. the part where the baby fell out. Like, I didn't yeah. watch the whole thing. But I was like, just watched That's like, that's like she could read the whole series and watch the whole thing. And when the baby fell, I was like, oh my God, it's dead. Because it was, it fell. Yeah, six feet because they give birth standing up. Mm -hmm. That was terrifying. Yeah. I really thought the baby was going to die. Wow. No, Amazing. it's necessary. It's necessary. It's yeah, like you explained that. Jump starts the baby and right. things flow. That was really cute. Whatever. What's everyone's favorite just, um, uh, baby, like zoo baby? I think baby giraffes. I love giraffes. Really? They're my favorite zoo animal, or giraffes. I the just, baby pandas they're just are gorgeous. cute. Baby pandas Because they're cute. just so fluffy. Rambunctious well, and ornery. I saw, some, I saw some baby giraffes at the San Francisco Zoo that had just kind of gotten to their legs and they were, they had this big, wonderful area that they can run in. And there were a lot of other giraffes standing around. And this one giraffe was just so filled with joy. She just couldn't Prancing. stop running. It was like, look what these legs can do. <laughs> <laughs> and ran around. I just figured and them out. Was, and it was so cool. Because all the so other fast. giraffes sort of got out of her way. And they just kind of, you could almost see them smiling at her. They were she was like watching so the toddler run around. So cute. <laughs> Just baby running elephants all around. are like that too. Yeah, they're so cute. Baby elephants yeah. are hilarious. I think too. baby elephants are my favorite. Or baby monkeys, maybe. I can't pick I love a favorite. Baby. I do you love baby all the babies? animals. Oh, so baby adorable. monkeys. I love baby monkeys. Talk to Talk to Jamie about baby monkeys. <laughs> Jamie loves baby monkeys. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. Jamie's giving us the thumbs up. He does love baby monkeys. I would love to just sit there and just let baby zoo animals mm -hmm. just come and cuddle me and just, oh, I'd be in heaven. I could really? die happy. Oh, it'd be great. I would not. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an animal lover as long as they're in caged oh, or far oh, away because no, no, no. I'm There's not a big apps. fan of animals. Yeah. There's There's a they're fun to look at. I love looking at them. <laughs> There's an Instagram account from a, a game preserve in oh. Australia. He saves uh, kangaroos because a lot of times kangaroos are killed on the road yeah. and their babies are still in their pouches. Yeah. That's and sad. and he has these babies and they're just tiny. He puts them in um, pillowcases and carries them around. So cute. So it's and like and the they mom's grow pouch. up and so he has this big game preserve. But they're just beautiful as they grow up and That's a lot really of these cute. Um, you know, they bring these babies to them because the parent, the mother will be killed on the highway. Well, and they're also killed as a pest species. In a lot well, of yeah, that's, I think that's illegal now in Australia, but. Can I, can I soapbox for a second? Sure, just for a second. Because <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's giving us the wind up. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't it be wonderful if we lived in a world where baby animals wouldn't have to live in a zoo? Yes. Yeah. Where we yeah. Would live Lived in an environmental situation in which baby animals could actually be baby animals in the wild. Yes. So that they would, would be I'm not, done. Not <laughs> eradicated as they've been done because of the environment and the building and the forest being cut down and the rainforest destroyed. So we have to have zoos to save, to them. Have to save the species in many cases. Yeah. They're happy there, though. Yeah. I think they're all right. I hope so. <laughs> well, we are going to show one last video from B&H Organics, so roll that tape. But um, this is Scarlet Frills Mustard. <laughs> Look how beautiful it is. Mmm. Mmm. It's uh, a little I'll, spicy. I'll make your pot. Oh my goodness, the spice is amazing. Mmm. Mm. You don't get it at first and then it starts. Oh yeah. Mustard yeah. greens are my favorite. I agree with you. That's, That's great. It is. Yeah, so this was our pea experiment. So, like, you can eat these pea shoots, like the tops, mm -hmm. and you can eat the flowers, too. They're very tasty. Um, so that's why we originally planted them, and we were just harvesting the tops and bunching them for market. And then I let them go. Well, they started to flower, and I thought, eh, let's see what happens. <laughs> and there are baby peas in here. 
And this is, you know, what, the beginning of April? Maybe the toads have been pollinated. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that, that's, that's like, oh my one. gosh. For me, that's unheard of. That's amazing. And I thought, oh, there's probably just one. But somebody was in here working, you know? Because there are definitely peas coming. Oh. Well, this has been such a wonderful trip here to B&H Organics. And thank you so much for having us and yeah. touring us. Thank you for being such a good boy. Uh, Mostly. Now, <laughs> if somebody wants to join with the CSA or just see you in the farm, how do they do that? How do we get in contact with you? The best way to contact us is through our website. It's www.bhorganicproduce.com. It's a full interactive website. There's information about our CSA and our plant sales and our farmers markets and the events that we often have at the farm on the website. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. Oh. So you can email us, send a message through Facebook or Instagram. That's one of the best What ways. does BH stand for? Oh, that's a great question. So Bowers was my maiden name. Ah. And the owner of the farm is Hart. Uh, oh, Whole right. Hart. And we he offered for me to come here to the farm so we originally joined the business together or created the business together so it's our last name well that's wonderful yeah. well thank you so much for thank having you. us it's been thank a great you. time yeah this has been great to see you yeah. again <laughs> and, and from from jane and nicole to all of you and the farm and the animals and the moon guys. Yeah. <laughs> bye goodbye thank you Jamie's Three nervous. minutes. All oh, right, we have a couple minutes left. <laughs> okay. You know, we have one topic <laughs> that's a, a bit minutes. of a controversial topic. I know this is not for three minutes, but we're going to th throw it out there anyway. Because the whole photo is important. <laughs> <laughs> I get thrown under the bus for this. <laughs> that, listen, what, it's important, right? Well, it's not important. I don't know. I guess it is important. Two minutes. Natural childbirth <laughs> versus hospital childbirth. So, like home birth. Home birth. Versus hospital. That's scary. Yeah, well, like I said, I've been watching technology. Call the Midwife, um, which is a show out of the BBC, and it's all about the late 1950s East End London, and, it, and these mid, midwives who um, went and delivered babies, and their preferred method was in home. They would go into a home check, make sure it was sanitary and ready to go. They'd bring a box over that had everything the mother would need to set up the bed, and you know, it was preferred that your mother or a sister or an aunt or another female was in the room. Guys were kept out. Doctor only came if there was a complication. That's how the Duggars do. And and you didn't go it. to the hospital <laughs> unless there was a problem. And, you know, when I had David, it, there was no question. You just go to the hospital. And so I you it never just, thought about a home it birth? just made me think, like, are there other options? And I know that home births have had a resurgence in popularity and, like, the births in pools yep. and all these kind of things. And I wonder, like... If we have another child, do we just choose the hospital, or do we maybe go with a midwife or a doula and and try it a different way? Everything else is normal. Home birth is fine. But yeah. If there's any, if you watch watch the midwife, if you watch the the midwife show, and get the the, the birth the the infant birth and death rates at that time. Yeah. There were a lot of babies that died yeah. because yeah. the doctor didn't get there in and time. And the mothers. And the mothers died. So, you know, under yeah. perfect conditions, a home birth is fine. As yeah. far as natural childbirth and drug childbirth, I've done both. And let me tell you, God made those men and women who created the drug <laughs> to drug me during childbirth. Hey, I'm not gonna knock those. I, absolutely. I, I, mean, I would take the drugs. <laughs> See, I mean, to be continued. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll touch so on continue that. Continue this really discussion on Twitter and Facebook, guys. What yeah, do you we'll think? touch on that another time. <laughs> well, we, we have to we'll wrap things up here, but um, we want to thank Joan, Tyler, Matthew, Lewis, and Raheem for helping us in the studio tonight. Yay. Um, our next show is Monday, June 26th at 9 p.m. We have a guest host, Sarah McKillop, from Ooh. the Humane Society, or, or uh, the ARL. I'm sorry. I apologize, oh, nice. Sarah. Um, anybody have any plugs or anything that we want to... We want to thank... Oh, we want to thank... Uh, oh, Sabrina. We want to thank Sabrina for joining us, and Sabrina. And Sabrina. Oh, thank you. Come back thank soon, you. Sabrina. Thank you. Always welcome. Yes. Now we're All right. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. <laughs>